We're going to find our body in three, two, one. I'm back with another drunk reaction. And today I'm drinking fireballs. I offered them. So earlier this week, I launched a new thing on Patreon where I'm allowing early access to Sopranos episodes. Basically, um, two weeks of episodes. I do two episodes a week. And each episode has two parts, right? So we're talking about eight uploads. Essentially, it's eight uploads, right? So I'm scrambling to put these eight uploads on YouTube. And uh, to get allow early access from Patreon, you have to make them unlisted. Rather than normally I make them scheduled. And I put it, okay, they're scheduled. They're not officially online. Here's, and you put in a date and a time that they will be launched online. And then you forget about it. You can die and shit will still be getting uploaded if you schedule them, right? If you, unlisted just means that anybody with a link can see it, but nobody else can see it, right? <laughs> Theoretically. When I upload my videos, and I'm going to be doing this today with uh, Prodigal Son because now the uh, the views I got last week and the likes I got last week from Prodigal Son were enough to inspire me. Okay, I'm going to do this season. So now that I'm going to do this season, I add a, a Prodigal Son playlist, right? So that somebody can check out all my playlists, see Prodigal Son, click on that, and then watch them all. Just It's very organized. Everything's under the, the uh, Drunk Reactions playlist. So if you just want to see Drunk Reactions... Not seeing any of the other bullshit on my channel, you can hit that, and there's like fucking 500 videos on there by now, right? But there's a subcategory just for whatever the show happens to be. So I've been doing this with uh, Sopranos, right? So I have a Sopranos playlist. What I didn't know was when you have a video that's unlisted that only people with the link can see, and you add it to a playlist, motherfuckers can see it. <laughs> it's on the fucking playlist, right? It makes sense. But... So what happened was I had eight uploads, I said. So, like, each upload takes a while. So I upload the first one, make it unlisted. I upload the second one, make it unlisted. I'm uploading the third one. As I go to the uh, the screen to upload the third one, it shows you all your content. These things have been scheduled. They have zero views because they've been scheduled, right? These things are unlisted. They have zero. Whoa, wait. One of them had ten views, and one of them had five views. It's been unlisted. I ain't even put the link on Patreon yet. Because I was waiting until I had all up eight uploads before I put the link on Patreon. There's no way anybody can see this shit. One of them already had ten views. And a like, by the way. And then one of them had fucking five views and a like. I'm like, who, how the fuck can they see it? I was like, how the fuck are they seeing it? It's impossible. It's unlisted. How can they see it? And I was like, the goddamn playlist. So I go in there real quick. Take it, take it off the fucking playlist. Save it. Pull back out. Do it to the other one. So, the t 10 people got to see the first one. Only 5 people got to see the second one, right? My point is, I didn't realize people were, looking, were using a playlist because I had uploaded some uh, Sopranos episodes that were for everybody earlier that day, right? Just a couple hours earlier. And motherfuckers must have been cruising that playlist, man. Like, because we're talking about, there was only an access uh, time period of about 10 minutes. Maybe 15 minutes. You know, where, because I had uploaded the second one. Saved it, and then I was uh, exporting the third one, and I started uploading the third one. That's when I noticed what was going on, right? So, motherfuckers were cruising down that goddamn playlist. They said, oh, shit, we got some more shit that ain't even been uh, made public yet? Boom, and they jumped in there, right? It's like uh, Indiana Jones jumping through before that fucking door comes down. And they even reached back and grabbed their fucking hat, which is all I've always considered to be a boss move. Okay, what's the point of all this? The point is, it's very hard to anticipate all the angles when you're doing shit, and you've got other human beings who also have their own brains their own ingenuity, and, you know, a person could go, a person, people ain't pawns that can only go forward and maybe attack diagonally. People can go in any direction, at any time. It's really hard to anticipate what one person can do. And you're trying to anticipate people you don't even fucking know, man. Like, I wasn't expecting people to be on my playlist that fast. I, I didn't even think about the playlist. But even if I had, I'd been like, well, that ain't no problem. Ain't nobody gonna be looking at that shit. So... Being a fucking nefarious villain who's always looking at all the angles and manipulating people, it works great when you're a writer. Because a writer, you can make people do whatever the fuck you want. The The bad guy can anticipate what the good guy's going to do because, yeah, you know, the, the, the writer be like, okay, here's the three options. The bad guy will anticipate, okay, what's the best option for this motherfucker? What you don't realize, maybe they just want to stop at the park and just fucking eat a sandwich in the park today for an hour so they don't go home and check their voicemail real quick, you know, or back when you had message machines or whatever. Or they don't go home and they don't see the note you left for them real fast. Maybe they have a fucking cramp. And, you know, they just want to sit down and drink some Gatorade before they get home. You know what I'm saying? Like, my point is, the surgeon is always like this fucking criminal mastermind who be fucking anticipating all kinds of shit, man. Just like anticipating like a motherfucker. Okay, I do this, 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 this happens, and at the end I get what I want. Kind of like uh, uh, Raymond Redson is another good example of this. That sh in, in real life, that shit is fucking hard. 
<laughs> Which is why I guess we don't have supervillains in real life, right? We have in fiction because it's not so goddamn hard. So most of the time I don't believe these masterminds. They call it Xantos Chess or something. I don't know how to pronounce it, Xantos, but it starts with an X, right? X-A-N-T-O-S, I think. Uh, they, over at TV Tropes, they call it Xantos Chess where it's like he can see 75 moves ahead, right? Um, it's really hard to pull it off. And this is one of the few shows where I actually believe the surgeon is that smart. It's the writing, and they don't get too crazy with it where he's anticipating 27 people at once. But it's also the acting. That dude's acting is just phenomenal. So I don't know, man. Like, I'm just saying, like, in real life, I, I would make a terrible supervillain because I didn't even think about playlists. <laughs> All right, enough of that shit. Let's get into this. Anything you'd like to share? Man, you don't need this mupper in any kind of well, fucking I'm environment so where he's talking I to other patients. No idea we had. To... What are you? Damn. Why haven't you been seeing your therapist? Oh shit! Good morning, mother. She sent that fucking Oski on a mission to trap him inside. Whatever it is, you can tell me, even if it is sexual in nature. It's not that. Hell no, weird. No, no. no. The person you can talk to about it is a narcissistic psychopath. Fun. Not fun. Is there a gardener the listening to this phone conversation? Did I see that right? To... They moved the camera, so I can't be sure. But I think Probably I saw there was a gardener too. In nature. Hearing this shit. Talking about this. Well, I know you're not. And yeah, see his feet. You can't let a motherfucker hear this shit. You're helping her move? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what the fuck house did I walk into? <laughs> what is it? And with this creepy ass case. Yeah, we ain't had a good church murder since Hannibal. But this is... Ritualistic. <laughs> Look at us. Finishing each other's sentences. Oh, Jesus Christ, here. man. Dude, you gotta have a talk with her. That's enough. It's enough, man. Have a talk with her. Abaddon. Oh, yeah. A demon did Abaddon it. Excellent. The I've been waiting for that crossover with Evil. The, <laughs> the, the TV series Evil. So now we know our killer's name. Who is it? Oh, you know. The devil? Um, I think Abaddon's a different demon. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to debate you on this. <laughs> you can give me a profile. My profile is your right. dick. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of dick, you need to stop the that. Blood <laughs> this killer was... What? I do know another killer. Who oh, of course you do. Of course you do. Smells like urine. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ, man. Urine. Was that necessary? <laughs> that is the first thing I noticed about New York City and L.A. The first time I visited both places, man, the streets smelled like piss. Why not call in an expert? Who is that? Friar Pete, an old neighbor. He was ejected from his monastery for extreme views. This is why they let him go out on the yard. Spree. I'd get it to bring in more flames. nuts into the, the salad, right? I, brought him onto the I mean, they, but many of the writers. Counted 44 precise incisions. It's an ominous number, 40. He said 44. Jesus asshole. spent 40 days Not in the 40. world in great detail, and his field guide to surgery. The illustrations are. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is extra. The is obsessed creepy. with rich. Even for this show. Catholic. Stay in the church camp performance right without permission. Wow, well, isn't that helpful? Permission from who? <laughs> He's so patronizing. A physician. Talk to with <laughs> it's like it's like an evil Sesame Street. And what does this object look like? A square, a square. Very good. Yes, yes. That's exactly it. Just slipped my mind. <laughs> Can you come in, Norman? All right. <laughs> Maybe she could throw a voice. Maybe this time it's the reverse. Like, pulls out a clock just to be careful, you know. <laughs> All right, supernatural. And we go to commercial. Of course we do. Fuck all this. <laughs> what does Father Ray's shout? The power of Christ compels you! <laughs> Excuse me. That's a great um, writing, directing trick. Low voice, low voice, low voice, shout! Low voice, low voice, low voice, shout! You know? 
Captain Duke, you heard the lady. Don't. I have to test him. I have to cross this line. No, you really don't. Eh, right? eh, listen to the man. Right? <laughs> this guy's pretty creepy. I'll give him that. Step back. It's okay. Man, why did you I, I had that pistol in my hand so fast, man. You gotta be shitting me. Bright's nuts. Blood. We He's knew that, but goddamn. Your... He's literally the laying across salt. I don't understand the rules here. The they read the man. The hell is this? My father. It says right under the. Never mind. Hans von Bersdorf's <laughs> field. Yes? What are the chances of this, her, right? right? The Archbishop said we could find him. I mean, the problem with these kind of mysteries in a, in a recurring TV series like this, they only have the budget for. It depends on the show, but they have the budget for two to four major guest stars, right? Major guest stars meaning they have more than 10 lines. You know, so that limits your suspects. Your suspect's pool is going to be between two to four people. Now, sometimes I'll bring in somebody just said two lines. That's a pretty, that's much lower in the budget. You can suspect that person. Having the background of other scenes where not speaking much, that's what I would do. In the case, I'd make that person a killer, right? That increases your suspect. But typically, oh, shit. Ah, they got me with the, they got me with the fucking dream. Still, I do think it's the Sister Agnes. Because, like I said, you only have so many suspects because of what I said. You know. Why are you wearing body armor? Because you fell asleep. Damn. That's Your very hurtful. Your are kind of epic. Tell wow. Me. I love the surreal aspect of this show, man. You could just be like, la, 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 ordinary scene, procedural show, procedural show, ordinary scene. And then they just throw a fucking curveball like it was from Nolan Ryan from his heyday, man. Bam! Like, God damn, man. You guys be paying attention. You can't be on your text back. Like, Holy shit. Jump scare. Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> and I need that element in my life. That's why I don't watch procedurals, you know. You think I'm wrong? Can I be straight? I don't know. It's really hard with the Hemsworth brothers out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> the book was not in my dream. That nun was Sister Agnes. Your dream's trying to tell you something. Weird. Just saying. Are you sure you're not? Are you any different? Been on edge lately. Even for you. You want to talk about it? I'm fine. Really? Yeah, remember what he said earlier in this episode? Uh-huh. Yeah, they did that on purpose. <laughs> I swear this job is going to kill me. I think that's probably true if this show do. runs long enough. Goya? Isn't Goya, did he do the job drawing where that motherfucker's eating that person when he's got that crazy little Zeus, or uh, Zeus's father was eating one of his children? Kronos, I think. Yeah. Like, that shit, that's a creepy-ass painting. Sister Agnes and the professor, they're restoring old paintings. We have to get to the computer. Yep, it's Sister no. Agnes. Like I said, it's, I'm not a genius, it's just they don't have many, uh, many possibilities, right? Sister Agnes could be suffering from paranoid delusions brought on by lead poison. She thinks she's possessed. Oh, shit. What was that? She's about to pull the crazy. devil out. You don't want that. But we're the only people here, right? Stay with them, Danny. JT, you with me. Let's go. All the people that guys follow me. <laughs> She's going to be okay. I taught her. I taught her how to See, now I think it's this motherfucker. I did. He taught her how to handle the pain. In other words, he was exposed to the pain without mask and gloves. They're going to find her body down there so we realize it's not her. And that motherfucker's going to attack Bright. Do you copy? Come in. I don't hear shit. Carmel, major crimes. This is a police channel. Impersonating a cop is a finable offense. You gotta be shitting me, man. Man, go ahead and file this grievance. Fuck it. Where the book comes. Use the mouse. Where the book comes. Use the mouse. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they're gonna find her body. They're gonna find her body in three, two, Boss. one. Yeah, that's pretty close, actually. Assuming that's the body, not another, another jump scare. Oh, okay. Well, she's not dead, but still. You're gonna be okay. The problem with this right here is you could do that to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> look at Bright. <laughs> He's looking at that motherfucker boy. Is that the painting? Really? You gotta walk away from that dude when you know it's him. You know it's him. My God, that's terrible restoration. 
Huh? Need to go. I keep an eye on him. Okay. <laughs> and Prince was like, hey, you ain't said nothing but a word, baby. <laughs> I was expecting some kind of protest. No, nah, man, I can't leave you alone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't said nothing but a word, motherfucker. <laughs> he is fucking gone, man. He barely got the words out of his mouth. That fucking father was the fuck out of there. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the funniest thing I've seen all week. <laughs> he fucking bounced, boy. Jesus Christ, that's terrible, man. You're a priest. You're supposed to serve and protect. Well, not protect necessarily, but serve at least, right? Boom, and don't let him out. Damn. Got it. <laughs> I'm lucky to with him. Holy shit, that is fucking hilarious. Achieve a classical affair. This motherfucker's on full. I'm it puts the lotion on the skin mode. He ain't trying to hear no logic, no reason, nothing. Did you see him? Remember Friar P? What does it mean? Your son is going to die. Yeah, <laughs> Friar P's creepy gotcha. as a Well, fuck, Malcolm, man. I have Friar P in your expert opinion. Exorcism is the only way. Exorcisms don't work. Possession isn't. But evil. he believes they work, motherfucker. Shit. How are how we ahead of you, dude? You're you supposed to be smart. Evil is repels you. <laughs> power of Christ compels you. Can't it believe it? I like power. how they, they talked about it earlier. The power of Christ that this is great you. writing. It really is. The power of Christ compels you. <laughs> this is a fantastic voice. That's right. On your knees, bitch. <laughs> fantastic. Oh, shit. <laughs> you had to jump up again. I mean, it all came down to knock him the fuck out. That's, you might as well just started there, you know? Why are you ignoring me, bitch? How much of that did you hear? I oh. heard everything. Maybe it was me. How's that? You possessed me? Well, isn't that what parenting is? No. Your mother and I, we are the power that compels you. <laughs> you to brush your teeth. And pay your bills. That's a little thin. It sounds nice on surface, but it's only about one inch deep, you know. You know, leave you behind. Not as long as we keep getting renewed. My boy. He needs me now more than ever. And there is nothing I can do in here. Oh, so shit. Don't tell me he's getting out. Life. Oh, shit. I didn't even see that coming. I gotta get out of here. I have a Bible study. A service for the faithful who are interested in Exodus. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, call me a Christian. Perhaps. <laughs> I thought they were giving this dude the last screen time for one episode. That's a shit. Fantastic. Good shit, man. Good shit. The writing's really strong this year. Of course, it's strong last year, but I feel like they've come in their own. Second seasons are almost always better than the first season. It's a bad sign if your first season is the best season of your show. It's not good. Um... Because in that off season, that couple of months when you finish the first season as writers, you finish the first season, you have time to reflect. Okay, this is what worked. This is what didn't work. This is what we want to do. These are characters we want to emphasize. That's why you'll see so many changes between the first season and second season. You know, whatever happened to Living and Dunham's sister? We don't fucking know because she didn't work. Get out. Just being one example. So, um, and you know, I feel like they reflect. Okay, these are these are the themes we're going to really hammer down on, and then and. Totally, you know, the the best things with these kind of shows, and this was true with House, the best episodes of House, best episodes of a lot of shows like this, the patient of the week, the villain of the week, whatever, thematically should also be relevant to what's going on with the, the, the main characters. And this case, this week, man, it was just on point. I mean, it did so many things. Think about this, okay? First of all, they're doing the theme of religion versus parenting. I feel like it's a little thin, but still, they did it, and they made a compelling case. But the, one of the characters they brought in to explain this shit, that friar or father or whatever motherfucker in prison, uh, they're going to continue forward with him, and that'll be how fucking uh, the surgeon gets out, right? So they were able to accomplish everything in this episode and set up a future plot line all in one. You know, like, the writing's 
fucking phenomenal. Like, these guys are on top of their game. 